Welcome back. So something I don't think I've shown very well, um, at least not for a long time, was how much room there is in the back. So I just put the back seats in there just briefly and they're just sitting in there. They're not bolted down to the, the mounts. But I just wanted to show you and you can see there, uh, just sitting in the back, um, how much leg room that I still have there. And I've got it, you know, just with the two seats in the back right now. And if I move over to the other side, you'll be able to see... Uh, kind of you know how much room there is over there as well and you know I've got like a good um, six or more inches in between my knee and the back of the other seat and the the front seats have been sort of pulled to where they would be for you know just your average size person and uh, reaching across there you can see I've you know got to reach from one side to the other I'm about um, five and eleven and a half just so for reference and uh, so I can lay down on the seats here. I'm being careful because I said they're not bolted down. They're just sitting on the seat mounts. And I can actually lay down there and pretty much stretch all the way out. And, you know, I can I can fit in there in between the, the sides of the cabin. Uh, I don't have the door trims on there right now. So they take off um, a couple of inches on either side. So um, you know, it's going to make it shorter like that. But anyway, I wanted just to show you kind of what that... Uh, what that looks like um, just for reference because so I don't think I've really uh, done this before uh, anyway and this is what the looks like sitting there I've obviously got the doors up but this is the view you actually have really good visibility from there you sit high up in the back um, and so you can you can see out in pretty much you know 180 degrees of direction well even more of that if you look back over your shoulder you can see back sort of you know somewhat behind you so yeah it's pretty spacious back there as you can see and uh, lastly I want to show you what it looks like with just what would be three seats in the back so I've got the two seats push over that the one there is in dead center in the aircraft now, obviously I don't have a third seat to put over there but you could fit three seats there you wouldn't be able to put the door trim or the side panel trim in there um, because of the shoulder bolster on those seats but if you had a uh, narrower seat in there that didn't have that shoulder bolster on there, you would be able to put the door trim in there. It's just those, they just stick out a little bit much. And so yesterday I spent the day up at Brits and he did all the welding, or pretty much uh, all the welding to put these stick assemblies together. And as you can see, this is the, the left hand side one. We'd already done the right one a while ago when I did that test, uh, just to see if everything was going to work for this uh, design. So he's got that started off, got the two little mounts there that hold um, the um, V-groove pulleys on there. And now he's uh, welding on one of the little uh, round thing, uh, sort of the parts there that uh, the bearing mounts to, or the bearing sits, slides onto. And uh, you see Brit's got this cool little carousel thing there that just sort of rotates around at whatever speed he's got it set at so he can just um, weld anything that sort of has a circular uh, pattern around it without any problems and that's what that one looks like uh, when it's done so there's two of those those are the ones that I um, machined on the lathe there the other day the, at least the round parts and the other bits cut out on the bandsaw and this is uh, one of the longer arms there that connects to the aileron linkage uh, the rod linkage and it has the little adjuster bracket on there for the end stop and so that's what Brit's welding on now, one of those. So I pretty much spent the whole day up there and going through and getting all the parts all put together carefully and trying not to make any mistakes along the way. Um, and I've also, just for reference, I've sent um, or dropped off the 7075 solid square rod that I got and also the 6061 square tube that I got dropped that off at the metal finishes and here yeah, Brit, Brit's <laughs> being a bit of a comedian there <laughs> for all those people who say he doesn't wear gloves um, yeah so I've dropped off the 7075 there and it turns out I figured out that I can actually have the end of that drilled um, sort of gun drilled for the first seven inches from one of the local shops up here, local CNC shops, that has a lathe that um, has like a four tooth lathe or a four tooth chuck. So that way I'll be able to have the cables running on the inside and still use the 7075 and they'll pop out 
um, about seven inches down instead of going all the way through to the very end and there's enough clearance there for that to work yeah so you see Brit's making some progress there and getting things uh, together so that's kind of exciting and as you can tell it's been a month since the guys were out here now and that's kind of knew it would take about a month to get these six sticks working and all together it's just how long it takes to do stuff um, but you know within a few more days I should be able to have everything in the 7075 should be ready tomorrow to pick up and then I can take it to uh, the, uh, the local machine shop here to get it drilled and uh, that's pretty much the last piece everything else um, pretty much done um, yeah and I think it's going to work out well with that 7075 with the um, with the hard anodizing on there it should be plenty strong enough and I don't think it's going to have any problems with um, any indentation happening there unless you really just crank on the sticks like crazy at the stop which you know it's just there's no reason to do that you know, you're purposely trying to damage something where it, you know that's not going to happen in the real world and if it does happen in the real world it's still a you know a usable thing but you've just done some you know long lasting damage if you put a, a dent in a thing so this is one of the end caps here with one of those bearings inside there so uh, that'll be on the end of the 7075 uh, square rod and then Brit still has to weld these guys up those are the little transitions from the end of the square stick and so now this is today uh, I wanted to test fit everything in to the aircraft before I had Brit weld on the last little pieces there that allows me to sort of bolt everything up and there's you know a piece on each one so assembling those things and just I didn't even have to really press those in just just by hand I, I made everything snug enough so those bearings just sort of push on by hand um, but they're you know they, they won't fall off um, and then I had to do these temporary ones um, that one I'm sitting in there just drops in loosely so it's just a temporary one so I can fit it without the bearing getting stuck in there and those ones there in the back there I have to actually take a bit more material off of those on the lathe because um, they ended up being that larger diameter was just too much and I was going to hit something else around there so I had to had to take those down yet so as you can see that's on there and um, ready to put in so that's basically pushed on now and you can get it off but it's you know it's not like a, a full-on hard press fit like some other fitments and stuff that I've done but it, it doesn't rattle around at all it doesn't move so that's how that's going to sit on there and the idea is that I can go and fit this inside the fuselage there and then make a mark of where that needs to be welded to that little tab thing and then we take it back up to Brits and have him weld that so this is what the right hand side line one looks like um, assembled there and moving around and it seems to be working fine I've got to do a little bit more of adjustment there for the center rod um, for tension and just alignment there I think I have to just ad adjust it just a tiny bit there so um, it's not touching on any of the sides of the holes that it's going through there because it's a fairly snug fit um, but you can see it is working there and there's that bracket that is what I need to scribe that so Brick can weld that on so yeah that one's uh, pretty much done and this is the other side the left hand side so same thing with this one just got it all prepped up and ready to fit in there and uh, and scribe it and this is what it looks like in there so and I've you know, pulled the panel out there so I can work in behind there and it worked out fine there with the clearance around the uh, air conditioning unit there I get the travel the 90 degrees of travel that I need there uh, without any sort of interference so yeah I just got to do a little bit more adjustment in there once I go to mount that all back in and you can see under there it's not you know when it rotates around it, it stops just before the air conditioning unit so yeah it's gonna work out well I think it's not bad really for a retrofit and a quick design and make something new all of a sudden <laughs> um, yes yeah, so I'll have that tomorrow get that all back in and uh, you know properly fitted 
And lastly, this is what those uh, transitions look like. Brick got those welded up. So they're looking nice, and I'm just going to probably just uh, sort of brush those down so they have that sort of brushed aluminum look. And then uh, lastly, he, I went up to his place this afternoon there and he just welded on those little tabs for me. So I'm ready to basically assemble the whole thing, but I've got to go down and pick up the 7075 tomorrow and then take that to the other shop. So that's going to take a while because it's about an hour drive away. Anyway, that's the update for the first half of this week. Thanks for watching and tune in again and see what I have for you next time.